Uh, so we are live this morning. Welcome back. Uh, we just hit our 24-hour mark and 3.675 million. I'm still <laughs> utterly flabbergasted. Yeah. Uh, talked about it all last night. Talked about it this morning. Uh, you guys have just been amazing beyond belief. Thank you so much for all of the crazy support and all the love that you have for this amazing game we all love. It's been insane. Yep. I mean, none, none of us predicted this. So, no. <laughs> I mean, in our wildest numbers, we're like, okay, we all, we've, I think we're like less than half of this, we thought maybe on the first day. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. you guys uh, just blew us all away, and that's fantastic. Uh, so, first thing on our schedule this morning is an uh, interview with Lauren. I'm going to let Lauren introduce himself, give himself a little bit of a, a rundown for those that may not know him or have only heard, you know, about the shadow behind, uh, <laughs> shadow behind the shadow. The Capellan behind the throne. Okay, yeah, well, <laughs> safest place to be. Actually, that's true. <laughs> make sure that make sure the chancellor and the throne, you know, absorb the bullets. Hi, I'm Lauren Coleman. I am the owner, CEO, publisher uh, at Catalyst Game Labs, and like seven other hats I wear from time to time. Um, and uh, I started as a, uh, for those who remember, as a uh, uh, source book and fiction writer for FASA way, way back um, in the uh, '90s, 90s somewhere. Late and 90s. Uh, yeah, late mid, 90, mid, mid late 90s. Mid late nineties. Um, I have, I believe at this point, thirteen Battletech MechWarrior novels, uh, three or four video games, a bunch of short fiction chapter serials, and uh, dozens of source books credits. And if this, if there is a writing uh, project for Battletech, I have not been involved in. I do not know what that could possibly be. Um, I've been I've been living in, in this universe in my head for way too long, and enjoying every minute of it. And now we get to take Battletech to new and impressive heights, not seen since the days of yore, or what we call the FASA era. Um, I'm so happy to 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 be able to bring this back and and bring Battletech to new heights. And uh, with with the last few years, with the two Kickstarters and the and the renaissance of Battletech product in the market. And what I hear from game stores every day come up to us thanking us for making Battletech a, a powerhouse uh, game uh, game line again. Could not be uh, happier and more proud of my team because they have done something really amazing at 3.676989. Um, and now going, and oh, about to, about to crack another, another little tiny goal there, but it's just been crazy. And uh, so now we're here at Adepticon and enjoying this and. Being here to, to pass along information as much as we can to you guys, and let's get going. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, answering one quick question from the very beginning, because we're literally looking at your questions. Uh, this table setup is for our Northwind, uh, Invasion of Northwind actual play scenario at 1. So anybody that has questions on that, go ahead and hold those off for the 1 p.m. game of Awesome. Uh, and so then uh, one of the very first... I was doing that earlier, like... <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah, sound of like when you, when you move to the 3D buildings, you just have to put the sound effects in when they jump. <laughs> uh, and then somebody said, uh, "Oh, the first question for Lauren: Why are Davians better than Capellans? They got better PR. I mean, let's, let's say, Hans Davian, like the, he cornered the market in public relations back in the day, and there's just there's just no way to beat that. Um, <laughs> even even when they lose, they they apparently they apparently win. So. I hate you. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I love the Capellans because I get to really bring them out and really make, do something with them as a faction for the first time ever. So they have a very near, dear place near my heart where the dagger goes in repeatedly. Um, but, uh, you know, it's hard, it's hard to you know not argue that Davians are the golden boys of the Baltic universe. And, you know, we need someone to work the mines when, when we eventually take over the Star League. So it's, it's all good. <laughs> uh, so pull... <laughs> Polcom says, can Randall make all the jump jet noises all weekend? I will totally do that from now on. All actual play videos that I am in, there will be jump jet noises. Even when I jump, he'll make the noises. Yes. Are you ready? Go. <laughs> you got to get the... <laughs> Actually, too bad we don't have one of the jump plume uh, Ooh, yeah. next we have. Uh, so I think we're still waiting for uh, people to come in. And uh, please start you know, asking your good questions of Lauren. Uh, fiction, company, running, whatever it might be. Uh, we're here to answer those. Um, while we wait for some other questions to come in, is there anything that you have wanted to ask the fans? 
Oh, I love it. I love asking the fans questions. I always learn something when I do. So when we had the crowd out here yesterday, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was just asking the crowd questions to see, you know, how long have you been playing? What's your favorite? What's your favorite style? Who plays Alpha Strike? So, you know, if, if whoever's watching us now, I mean, just what what year did you start playing? You know, I have I met my I met a 1985 veteran yesterday. That was always fun. Yeah, that so, was someone fantastic. who was someone who's been playing since year one. Yeah. Um, and so it's just, just it's just nice to know that kind of history. The Baltic's been around for almost forty years. Uh, not many games get to have that kind of legacy. Only a handful that really have that that strong of a legacy. Even you know a lot of games were invented back then have just gone away. Baltic still endures. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. It's. Uh, I, I love. I love that actually when we're in that crowd. Not only did we have. You know, people all the way back to the beginning, but then we had you know people that have been playing less than five years or less than well, a yeah. Year. There was people, that, yeah, people are brand um, new to the game, and uh, the 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 breadth of those playing is pretty magnificent right now. Yeah, um, we do actually have one right yeah, yeah. there. Did I miss one from NC Kestrel? I've said before that Catalyst isn't a software company, but this last year has seen a lot of live streaming and the city SDLs in the future apparently, from what we're looking at here. And uh, older projects like the Battletech Tactical Companion, Online Communities, and the Master Unit List. Where is it you see CGL going with digital efforts to support our favorite tabletop game? So the question is, where is CGL going with digital efforts? With yep. digital efforts. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, we do a lot of uh, fiction and uh, and small source book uh, material in digital, both on DriveThruRPG, through Amazon.com, through our own CGL, Cal's Game Labs uh, store. Um we were just talking this morning about these awesome buildings, Baltech uh, created buildings that fit exactly what's supposed to be on the map here. That are all uh, 3D printable, and we were looking at what what, we, what can we do with these with the STL files for 3D printing. Uh, that was just being pitched to me this morning. So, where else can we go with digital? Um, I would love to see more online kind of trailers like we've done for the for the Kickstarter video, but also do other things for, for good advertising. I would love to see almost like webisode kind of stuff uh, being done eventually, but that is out of our hands at the moment. But I'm always, you know, talking to our uh, our handlers over at Tops to say, hey, can we do something with this? And, you know, they consider things and they let us play in the edges occasionally. So what more digital could we do? What would you like to see? I mean, what, what, you know, I'll look at, we will look at anything. Um, sometimes the answer will be not, we're not ready for that. It's not, it's not quite ready for prime time yet, but we'll consider anything. Um, our goal, our job is to manage Battletech and make it more popular than it was last week, last month, last year. So if there's an idea we're not doing that we feel we could accomplish in a, in a quality way, we'll try it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so funny. Oh, t- prop wash <laughs> from the, Nick Smith. Oh, man. I think we're overdue for a Coleman versus Tackpole match in the pods. Next time they should command their own lance in a team battle. 40th anniversary event. Call the promoter. I hear the pods aren't working very well. They've been infested <laughs> with, uh, with little, with little urban <laughs> mech, uh, little urban oh, mech uh, plushies. Oh, you know, man. So you have to really go in there and dig those out. And then we'll, uh, we'll talk, Nick. Uh, so we've got a couple of people, uh, been there since 86, 89. That's awesome. And then where did the one go? 86, 89, yeah. Uh, for uh, how long they've been playing. Who's 86? Uh, where'd it go? There we go. Z- Zenith Dante from 86. Nice. Uh, Elise from 89. Uh, Lorcan Nagel from 89. Love that. That's fantastic. Uh, oh, so we have, uh, so from Airborne Stinger, with all the shakeups in the inner sphere, will periphery powers take a more active role in the politics of the sphere? Um, so there's a reason why we call it the periphery. Um, <laughs> so the short answer is not exactly. No, not exactly. Because, uh, periphery players just don't have the, either the political or the military clout to make a huge impact in the inner sphere. Um, that said, could you say, will they have more of a, uh, more, pl- more clout in the storyline? And that I think we could say is going to happen. With some of the things we know is, are coming up in the storyline in the not too distant future, you will see some action and reaction of what's going on out in the periphery as a few things shift around. Uh, some people might be ascending. Some factions out there may be uh, falling. Um, 
you know, there may be one that may, is its future is in doubt. Not saying who it is. Um, only because there are people nearby that will throw things at me if I do. Yes, I'll just cut you off. Yeah, there we go. I'll tell Ryan to just kill, kill there, your feed. Um, but there's definitely stuff going out there that will affect the inner sphere politically, militarily, and definitely in the storyline. Okay. Uh, from Eyes of Wolf, question for Lauren. Why don't you have an awesome beard? <laughs> I, I've tried. It's, it's, it's not good. <laughs> it's just... My, my my beard DNA somehow like migrated over to the, the Bills family. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. the Bills family has a uh, we stole hair from yeah. other people. I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. So from uh, another enemy, why haven't we gotten a legendary Mech Warriors box set with all the different Allard iterations of Yin Lo Wang? So we uh, yeah we have something very special in mind for that. So we're just gonna push that. We'll let you know that there's something special, and we'll leave it at that. There you go. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, ha- ha- Hamptaman Hansa. If you had a magic wand and any author you love would agree to write a BT novel, who would you ask to write that? I assume who's not already writing a BT novel. I'm assuming that's what he means. Um, that's a good question. Just any um, novelist that you love that you think would be amazing at a Battletech novel. Well, you, you guys may not know this, this particular writer. But uh, his name is Blaze Ward, and we've talked to him before about writing with us. Unfortunately, he is just having a brilliant, awesome military science fiction career writing his own. Uh, he has like four storylines running simultaneously. He releases a book every three months. He is a powerhouse writer, and I really love uh, several of his stories he's been writing, including one called The Undying Mercenaries. Uh, they, are, they, is, they are rude and obnoxious and hilarious. And uh, my favorite, so hey, Blaze. How you doing, man? Um, I think Blaze would be a brilliant Baltic writer if we could just lure him over to the dark side, but I don't think it's happening anytime soon. Nice. Um, but yeah, check him out on uh, his stuff's all on uh, up on Kindle. I think it's all it's all uh, e-publishing, but he's an amazing, amazing sci-fi military sci-fi writer. Awesome. Uh, so from Rain- Raining Fire, hey guys, the ELH wallpapers provided in the kickstarter rewarded are incomplete works in progress we are absolutely aware of that the fi- uh, dac our my maestro of all graphic design stuff has already taken care of that it's in the dropbox and it'll be migrating over so we we apologize for that mix up oh hey i just got a, an alert too saying I, I crossed the streams there i mentioned two writer one writer and one book series and screwed that up so let me rephrase that blaze ward jessica keller chronicles uh, military science fiction, uh, naval warfare, really awesome. And uh, again, one of my favorites. I've reread his series three times. That is Blaze Ward, Jessica Keller, BV Larson, Undying Mercenaries, also amazing writer, and he's uh, got the big career going. Also, and I would love to lure either one of them to us. And so I want to make sure I get that right since I cross the streams. Nice. Okay. Uh, the True Wayfair add a classic record sheet side to the MUL. That is actually absolutely being what? discussed and worked on uh the master unit list oh yeah so that there's actual record sheets you can just yes. download it just like you can all the alpha strike so we are absolutely in discussions about how to make that happen uh oh from uh Filarial, i'm gonna br- brutalize all these so i apologize uh i found battletech for the first time last year at gen con i saw the grinder and took part and been hooked ever since awesome and then right below that hound Hansa, fall of 87 for me the fact that both of those are side by side yeah. like that just that warms my heart right like that shows it and by the way you getting sucked into the grinder i'm not sure there is a more fun way to play battletech than the grinder like yeah it's so ridiculously enjoyable to play it that way um question uh roland hq will we ever see a reworking of the battletech ccg um the long-term answer simple as would be yes probably i think so um, we've talked about it. With, it's one of those things where when we find the right design, we would do something. We cannot use the old CCG. That's just, it's Wizards of the Coast, uh, I think, so all the mechanics. Yeah, the, the engine owns Yeah, the engine. engine so it, was never, it should have been transferred over and it wasn't. So we just, we're staying away from that. Will we see a Baltic CCG or living card game version someday? I believe we will. Um, it's just, we haven't found it yet. Okay, uh, so then just a couple of shout-outs. Uh, Mon- Monkey Panis from, has been playing since 1990. Uh, Jay Arbiter from 1993. Another enemy from 88. That's just fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and then T-Den-O-M, uh, 
I'm a complete noob. I love mechs and it strikes a lot of the boxes. Best pledge for someone who doesn't own any battle tech. Um, what are the best pledges for any battle tech? Um, well, the re- obviously the recruit pledge is designed for you because it's, it comes with the, with the, uh, the beginner box and I think a salvage box and that's it. I mean, it's just very simple to get you playing. Now, if you, if you're, if you're want to just level, you know, plus one yourself on that one, then go to like the veteran level so you can grab a, the, the latest mercenaries box set, but you will have to add on a game of armored combat. So you've got the base box in there. So either one of those is a great place to start. It all depends on how, how hard you want to jump in. Fair? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, my, mind flayers, community efforts to grow the game at the local level. I'd like to see more energy in game shops. It's nice to see online hype for the game, but there's not a whole lot of that when I go into the various game shops in my city. So, um, it all depends on the game store. I, I just had two game stores come to me this morning to thank me for what Baltech has been doing in their stores. And one even said, you know, Baltech last year was four times the sales of the year before. And it was a very appreciable, you know, uh, level uh, number. Um, and it comes down to, you know, has the game store really invested in, uh, the Baltech brand, um, in the last three years since our first Kickstarter? And not all stores have, and that's fine. Um, it, 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 I own seven game stores myself, believe it or not, and it, it takes some, some, uh, some time and effort to really maximize that over time. So it comes down to we have that already going on with the stores who are really you know, buying in, and we are now working on new plans to support game stores in a way like for uh, – can we talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. That we uh, – Randall's have developed a uh, – Sort of like a beginning nascent um, um, organized play uh, in store demo program uh, that's being uh, put together right now. Uh, a big a big package that stores can pick up, and it will assist them in running games and tournaments with price support uh, as a as as the Baltech launches to a whole new height with this Kickstarter. So we are going to definitely do our part to promote this in your stores. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Lorcan Nagel asks, will the premium mechs be available in the pledge manager? It's not practical to get them from the U.S. web store in the EU. Um, no, it's not. I agree with you 100%. And I would say they are not going to be available in the pledge manager because these are, uh, they're not quite handcrafted, but they are, they are definitely custom crafted, um, in a, uh, uh, here the, in the States. We instead what we're, what we're working on, and I won't say no for sure, but I, th- I would say almost certainly not, pretty certain. Uh, but we are working on, and have been for a while, developing a uh, international hub system that we can use to fulfill store orders from your local, uh, from the EU, from Canada, from the UK, from Australia. So all shipping will be local shipping. That we would pre-stock these items in your in your local hub, and you would be able to order them for a reasonable. Uh, cost of shipping. So we uh, we do know this is an issue. We are working on solving that problem. Okay. Uh, and again, I apologize if we're not getting to you know, it, it's actually now <laughs> filling up, up and uh, up and going strong. So we're trying to get to all these questions. Luckily, we are literally streaming for all the way to the end of Sunday. We're going to have multiple interviews. You can get in that. I've seen some art interviews. There will be another art uh, round table with Brent and. Uh, Anthony Scroggins and Marco Mazzoni, who is the art director for Hairbrain Schemes, will be in tomorrow. Uh, so please hold all of your art questions for then. Also, somebody was saying... Uh, yeah, Brett does not want me answering art questions. I'll yeah, do it. I will. I will do it, but, you know. <laughs> well, also, some somebody was asking about, like, the uh, references and the creative inspiration for the look of these buildings. So that would be another great one to hopefully have in the back of your head when you get into that. Uh, Spooky did... Like, I just want to give him a giant hug. He did so well on these, but please hold those questions off for that. Uh, Cannon Hill said, I stayed up late playing Battletech Aces. I've always wanted something like this. What a delight. Uh, so for those that don't, first of all, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Second, Battletech Aces is our first attempt at a effectively an AI engine that allows you to play either play Alpha Strike either solo by yourself or cooperatively. Uh, we will be doing a live play test of that uh, on Sunday, so please check that out and hold any questions uh, for that time. 
Um, let's see. Lots of great just thank yous. That's awesome. Um, don't forget to hit me up if I'm if you see a good question I'm not doing. Uh, where we go? Uh, how? Uh, <laughs> another enemy. How much would a tier cost to give one back of the ability to kill a single single minor faction or major character of their choice? <laughs> minor faction or major character? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Wow, that would be dangerous to put in the hands of the uh, the fan base. Uh, that's dangerous to put in our hands. Yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, I, I well, I don't see that happening. It would it would have to it would have probably have to have a, a, a pretty serious comma, if not a, a multiple commas in it, because believe it or not, we really agonize and labor over these kind of questions all the time, especially at the big summit meetings we have, where we talk about we you know people don't get killed um, generally. Uh, uh, without a lot of due diligence and discussion and arguments and throwing things at each other and killing off a, even a minor faction is not something we do on a whim. Uh, it may seem that way sometimes, but it really isn't. We agonize over every single uh, major death or faction destruction uh, because it should be. These are important. There's people out there that are fans of every person, every faction. And if we're going to do it, we're going to make sure we do it in a way that at least they get a glorious end that means something. So... Yeah, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's probably just beyond our reach at the moment. Uh, here is a, a Spartan Indic. Spartan Indic. Yeah. Uh, for how prominent Avanti's Angels is in the Kickstarter with everyone getting double blind, will you be reviving them for the Ill Clan era? Um, yes. So, uh, that, uh, including double blind in the Kickstarter, was actually uh, his idea. Yes, and uh, brought it up uh, at Brent's idea, who's sitting <laughs> our, our, over there, um, who brought up that we needed a bigger fiction component in the Kickstarter, and Double Blind is just because it's both it's mercenary, it's introductory, it it, bring, it walks you into the world. It's a great onboard on ramp novel, and so I was convinced by these guys that we should just put it out there, and part of doing that meant a lot of. People are going to look at the angels again, and there is no follow-up story. So there is now a plan for what's going on with the. Uh, there's a few other Geo Avantis out there that are, you know, descendants or family of, of Marcus, the uh, unit commander, and so it's time to probably resurrect the angels and uh, bring them back and uh, see what they're going to be up to now. We have a certain special thing we might be doing with the Mahler, and hopefully we'll get to that in a little while. So we're just going to leave it at that. Um, is the, what, what is the mall? Is that the one from uh, the cartoon? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, You're saying that's a Somerset Strikers mech? Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Yes, it is. Okay. Um. Uh, oh, what you got? Find me something. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. They're <laughs> going through. Well, I had gone back up, and now I'm kind of coming back down. Uh, I so love seeing all the comments, just people thanking us and giving us the information about about their you know, when they start playing. Actually, I love reading these, so thank you. Yeah, and it uh, looks like somebody already answered. Uh, just in case uh, somebody else read it, there's a difference between the premium mechs and the legendaries. Uh, legendaries are legendary packs, force packs of named characters. Yeah. Uh, Natasha and Phelan, or not Phelan, uh, so on. Calandra. Uh, Calandra. Uh, and then the premium mechs are just on our website. Uh, they're higher quality, posable mechs. Sometimes come with variants or not. Yeah, um, done by our friends over at Monster Fight Club, who yeah. are doing an amazing job to uh, to get these things out. Yep. Um, okay, Nick Smith. Many know that Randall can be bribed with root beer, non-caffeinated. How can we bribe Lauren? Um, you know, I also like a really good root beer. I also like, you know, a really good scotch. I also like, uh, you know, I don't know. There's, 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 there's really nothing that can't be done. Be creative. Uh, from Compact Disco, since the Battlefield support objective packs has less than the other support packs, is the MSRP going to be lower, or will it come with a salvage box Kickstarter? That's it's the one actually, with the really big, the really actually, big chunky items, right? Uh, yeah, but it's still yeah. significant less. So it's actually both. It's only $30 instead of $40, and because it's only 4 to make up the difference when you're getting it uh, to the clan, you'll still get a salvage box. Ooh, okay, good to know. Um, when will we see the next, uh, sorry, from, uh, the true way fair, when will we see the next reprint of alpha strike commanders edition with current errata? Uh, one is heading to reprint right now. 
Um, uh, Ali's, I love Double Blind when it came out in the 90s. Love it. Thank you. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, Arcanus Raven. I know it most likely won't happen, but some Brotherhood of Randus lore short stories would be awesome. Yeah, I agree with you. It would. Um, and that's why, and this is one of the reasons why we have Shrapnel. Um, with Shrapnel, all those stories that have just kind of like fallen through the cracks over the years because there's not a good place to put them. If it's not in a novel or one of our occasional anthologies, where can they go? Shrapnel's where they go. So if there's a writer out there who's looking for a, some inspiration, Brother Aranis could make a fun little series of stories. Oh, absolutely. That's such a perfect shrapnel thing. Yeah. Uh, from War, Ward Robe Plays World War II. Just got the Alpha Strike box set, and I love how you've incorporated the fiction with that rule book. Also in at the battalion level. So thank you. And nice. Thank nice. you. Awesome. Uh, and then, then I'm hitting the spot where we went down, and everyone, of course, don't mess with Comstar, Gray Monday... <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they're getting some revenge on yeah, it. Yeah, Comstar just put Lauren and Randall under interdiction. <laughs> they would love to put us under interdiction. <laughs> they don't uh, have that power anymore. Uh, uh, Spartan in Indic, Cameron St. Germain, not wanting info, getting out about how the angels bested him. Cameron St. Germain, not wanting info. Yeah. I think they're just talking another about way of Double Blind in general. Yeah. Well, and the Great Monday trying to oh, right. knock about, us down. Yeah, that's true. That's awesome. Cameron St. Jamey is a great <laughs> character. He's got uh, he's got a vicious streak in him, but he and he's but he's very he is actually a very competent maybe not completely sane, but a very competent person. So he's he was a great character to, to play with and I was very happy to see him take the main stage for a while, uh, to work his way up to the to the main uh, the big pantheon he of was the Word of Blake. Great character. Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adventure 55, 3.69 million of pledges and still can't get the internet right. Dudes, go buy 5G hotspots. <laughs> uh, so just to give a shout out to our Six Sides of Gaming and the Lim Vendor Studios, uh, I was involved in every conversation and the weeks of time and investment and investigation yeah. they put in, the very expensive equipment that they bought to make this flawless, the endless hours before the show, and the internet is still just the internet. <laughs> So, again, huge shout-out to them. Yeah. They've done a phenomenal job, but if the Internet's going to crash, it's going to crash. Uh, so, Dagger TX question, when will we see the next reprint of Alpha Strike Commanders? Already uh, in did, progress. Uh, uh, already in progress. It'll be probably early to mid-summer by the time it gets back in. Information is ammunition. That never gets old. Never. Automotive cheap plastic. Uh, been playing since 1984. Wow. 84? Was that possible? Uh, Battle Droids. Oh, he's a Baldroids person. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, are we getting a Kentaro mech anytime soon? Um, probably not. Uh, so there are, <laughs> just as a fun quick aside, and again, you can ask more about Brent. Brent's like sitting across from us. That's why we keep, every time we say Brent, we look in that direction. Um, when we are looking at the lists of mechs we do, uh, Anthony Scroggins, who is the uh, art lead on the, cra the team that crafts the images... Uh, we'll put together their mega list of here's what we'd like to see. And then Ray, Brent, and I will put together, usually Ray or I will put together the initial list of here's what could be here. And then Ray, Brent, and I will have our own columns of what should be here or what we think. And then we endlessly haggle and discuss. And so it's, it's actually a pretty long convoluted process. Uh, but it has paid off wonderfully well so far. Um, and so I think. The Kentaro is just has a lot of designs up above it. Now, yeah. we're not going away anytime soon. As long as you guys are still here, we're going to keep doing this. Um, and so, is the Kentaro going to show up? Never say never, but it's probably we, a little ways out. We have Anthony chained to his desk for the most part, uh, and we don't let him stop. So we're just, you know, we we're making we're making plastic minis as fast as we can. Yep. But we okay. won't we won't go back and just release an old design. It will always get an update. So we can make sure it's, it's staying at the highest quality we can possibly do. Yep. Okay. Uh, Hauptman Hansa. I'll ask again since it was before the stream died. What era of mechs do you just love? Like as an example, TRL 3060 just warms my bones, even though a lot of the mechs are meh. Um, actually, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 3060 Fed Comes of a War fan because actually I created a lot of mechs that were in that area. Including two of my favorites, including the Sagittarius, which is like one of my top favorites. It's just, uh, it just looks mean. Like it's really, it's really having a bad day and it's going to take it out on you. Um, and, uh, 
anything in that uh, post uh, clan invasion era um, to where you get some real, you can really open up the design options. The thirty twenty five era for me was just there wasn't enough. I wasn't having enough fun designing really cool, unique uh, uh, des- uh, mechs. So I like I like post clan invasion, and probably a few years after, so where you could really start mixing up some of these fun technologies. So thirty sixty to Civil War is uh, is probably like my favorite era of, of mechs to design. Um, for me, I I think it's whatever era I'm playing. I'm pretty equal opportunity. I love it all. Okay, uh, another enemy. Next Kickstarter going to be Aerotech Revision. Come on, guys. We love our Shylones. We can't wait for the Visigoth. There, uh, there's, Aerotech, there's some Aerotech plans. We, Slowly. Uh, I mean, to be honest, and not, you know, Ray and I have had this conversation. Of all of the areas of the Battletech rules, Aerotech needs the most help. Like, yeah. it could use a complete rebuild from the ground up. So it's just a much longer process. But we always have evil plans in the works. Uh, from Commissar Fnord. Where's my Team Bonsai swag? Um, yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, how the Team Bonsai logo got into the Baltic universe to begin with, it was someone not paying attention. Uh, there's a, there's some, let's just say there's some issues with, some legal issues with that I don't want to get involved in. Uh, so I, well, I appreciate where the, you know, the, 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 the funness of having them in there. Um, I am not going to take the risk of uh, opening that particular door at the moment. Uh, there's some great Alpha Strike questions in here. Uh, I'm going to push those off to when we're talking uh, on Sunday with the Battletech AC. Yeah, that's so, not me. So please bring those up. Um, Falarial, does there exist a book that goes over a timeline overview of major events and the important points in those events in a broad spectrum? Uh, the book you're going to be looking for is the Battletech Universe book, uh, which hopefully will be heading to print here very soon and be and, out late summer. And getting a special edition and for the Kickstarter. And getting a super special edition of the yeah. Kickstarter. Yep. Um, sh- uh, Senketsen. Should any stories in Shrapnel be considered canon? Yes, most of them, if not all of them. I, I don't, yeah, I don't I, think John's putting anything in there we would consider apocryphal. Except for the, except for like the A Star One series, which I know was meant to be apocryphal uh, intentionally, um, almost everything going in there, to my knowledge, is being looked at as potentially canon material that will we can spit off of and include in novels and stuff anytime we want to. So, yeah. um, Oscar R H. At the moment, there tends to be a fairly substantial lead time on new releases become available in Europe. Are there plans to bring those times down, given you're looking to work with more centralized distributors worldwide? Yeah, with that, that's, that's exactly what we were trying to figure out how to do. We've been working on that for over a year now, trying to get those hubs. I mentioned this earlier, getting those hubs out there, not only that will service our online store to bring you the swag that does not make it into stores, but to get you uh, the ability to get local stores and local uh, buy, direct buyers the ability to get the new books faster. So they would go from from our manufacturer and uh, printers in China directly to the hubs and be available at that point for uh, online orders and for uh, distribution to stores. So that is definitely in our plans. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Jeremy Luke, has anyone pitched an Ilkland era thermal police stories? That would be dope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you should write one and submit it to Shrapnel. I mean, <laughs> that could be fun. Uh, Adventure 55. Right now, the search goals are primary unlocking the opportunity for us to buy more stuff. Am I missing the value of participating in the Kickstarter at high pledge levels rather than low pledge levels and buying the force packs and salvage box from retail? Um, all right. This is actually a really big question. Let me, let me unpack that real quick. Um, so several stretch goals do unlock the opportunity to just buy new force packs. Like we, all the force packs currently, uh, up until recently were already done. They're ready to start making uh, tomorrow. We're actually going to open up a few more that we have to finish, which will add a few weeks to the process, but we feel it's important enough to do that. That's why we're still unlocking a few last pieces that will be very important to to get the full um, uh, mercenary Kickstarter out there. Now, the question about the value, that's why we're doing that. But then there's a question about the value of the particular pledges. Each pledge was very carefully um, measured to make sure it's got good 
initial value before we unlock these stretch goals and go, a really good value after all stretch goals, both for plastic and fiction and g- other game swag material. So not everyone likes every piece of it. You, know, you may not be a fiction fan, but some people are. You may not be a, a, you may be a model statue, but some people like that. We're trying to approach this from the point of view of all Battletech fans. So there is something for everyone, and it will all be at a good value. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, right now, with all stretch goals in where we are, um, the total value of each pledge is, um, the cost per value is like, I want to say like, uh, try to remember this, 65%. So we have, the, we have the number somewhere in our, in our, in our, in our st- spreadsheets, but basically, uh, we're delivering a lot of value for every pledge level, and we have a few more, you know, obviously we have a few more big goals where we think we're going to hit, and we will pack as much into there as we possibly can without damaging how fast we can get it to you. We don't want to take the year and a half, two years we took last time due to COVID and retooling and other manufacturing and shipping things we had to deal with. We want to deliver this in a timely, efficient manner. And we want to make sure everyone is getting good value um, and make sure that we are planning this to support Battletech for the next several years. Um, now, specifically, people have been asking about the old pledge. I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and run off this for a little while. Because it's been asked a lot about the double force packs we offered in the last campaign. That was an amazing deal we were, we, that we did. Maybe we shouldn't have, only because from the point of view of we really overpromised on that. We made it work. But it was a lot of extra effort, a lot more time, and caused a lot of internal uh, conflict in getting things done. We are very, very, coming from a very, very careful point of view to get the stuff done that does not disrupt the schedule and or create a, a uh, problem with getting stuff also into retail stores and out in distribution and retail stores. So we're weighing everything. Okay, that's why you've seen us be a little more cautious this time. But we still believe we're delivering a very good value per pledge level. And we will continue to look at that on a per pledge level basis. And as we do that, yes, regimental commanders will have a better value than, than the battalion. Battalion better than company. Company better than veteran and so on. We are really trying to keep that all in a good order so those who support us more will also get more. And I think that's the way it should be done because people should be rewarded for taking those chances on us. I think we proved last time. We will deliver on our promises. There's a few things that fall off the radar uh, occasionally when we just look at something and go, well, that one just can't happen. But we did not, to my knowledge, uh, not deliver on anything physical that we promised. Um, yeah, there's still some digital things. Some digital things. Out. All the physical stuff came out. Even the one that came out, like the dice that came out, it was not up to our level of quality. We delivered what we had available and just cut the whole thing because it was not up to our standards. And so that's why we're being careful again and bringing stuff back in that we know we can hit, and we do not want to repeat that that the dice, uh, the dice issue, and but we want to bring dice back and other good things back. We are just determined to keep that quality level as high as possible. So that's why you know that's a very long answer to, but there's a lot to unpack in there because these are these are good questions. And uh, uh, so the last thing, just to explain yeah, yeah. One, one last corner on that is that the double force packs horribly undercut local retailers. Yeah, that too. Uh, yeah. It, it just totally cut them out. And the fact, it, it really was only that you, the community, are just have been amazing and growing and growing that it, we were able to overcome that. Um, yeah. And then now retailers are loving us, right? The tons of force packs sold through it. But it could very easily have gone the other way because yeah. we so undercut retailers. So the pricing is also very carefully done we, we, so that we are not undercutting retailers. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you decide, I just want to buy from my local retailer, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. We love supporting our local retailers. So do that. Yeah. So whatever whatever works for you, you know, there's no wrong way to support the Battletech community out there. Do what makes sense for you. Yep. And we are just fine with that. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, any chance of Critter Tech reprints? <laughs> uh, I think there's maybe a POD available on maybe, drive-thru. Maybe. That's about as close you're going to get for now. Yeah, not sure. Uh, uh, Col- Coltill, are there any plans to expand on the Clan Protectorate? Possible reunifications of the Spirit Cats and Nova Cat survivors? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm done. Uh, and I'm done. Uh, uh, 
Mr. Pro- uh, Popo God. Ah, oh, man, I still love that one. <laughs> Putting aside the what is right for the product line right now part, if you could snap your fingers and have a mech available in new plastics, what would it be? Um, did we did I, did I ever get my, uh, my, uh, uh, solitaire? No. The solitaire. And I knew that's exactly what he was going to I be. got my Sagittaire he, now. He was begging for the Sagittaire forever. Yeah. So let's just be clear. <laughs> uh, solitaire. Ooh. In fact, it'll be coming out, it'll, it'll, it'll be coming out in, in a, in a set very soon, but uh, after Mercenaries, cause it's, it's just one of my favorite light mechs to play with. Cause just, I just love the idea that I'd be able to just run across the map, like, you know, in one turn and just mess up someone's plans. Um, uh, and plus uh, I got that heavy laser, which, <coughs> excuse me. Ran, when, Randall, oh. when, when I designed it, Randall said, make it as sick as you want it. Just bend all the rules. Make it as just game-breaking as you can make it. And I did and gave it to him. He's like, do it that way. He was like, ooh. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's nasty. Yeah. Uh, it's and a it, vicious, it, well, it's a it vicious could have been thing. worse. It, it could, part. He wouldn't let me put a targeting computer on it. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, uh, solitaire. Played, <clears throat> absolutely. Uh, Elise, I played a Sagittarian Wednesday and survived the destruction of the Lance. Yep. Um... <laughs> Uh, Mr. Prop God, I'm going to look at Brent when I say this. Mr. Prop God, what's the stretch goal total for a plastic rattler? The mobile SDS? <laughs> the mobile SDS might be almost the size of this board, for those that don't know. And, yeah, that's likely never going to happen. You know what? We should do that following. Not the next map set. We should do that following. It'd be make a great centerpiece. Right. Right? So it's, it's something that... Maybe it would never be unlocked as part of that, but maybe just done and the STL is put out there for the fans. Uh, who knows? By the way, we just crossed we just crossed three point seven. So three point seven hundred thousand coming up on fourteen thousand backers. I That's, love it. Yeah, insane. Love it. Um, let's see. Would you consider a battlefield support style aerotech like what you're doing with tanks? Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Did a foul hand. Have you ever thought about sticking one of those little novellas or a single chapter book in each Lance Star Pack? Uh, we've thought about it. It did not work out um, from a cost of goods point of view, which is why. But we do have a couple things coming out. I think a Force Pack came out with a code that allowed for a, a complete anthology download. Was that the Proliferation Pack? The, yes. prolifer- the Proliferation Force Pack. We are experimenting with uh, putting a download code. They would allow them to get an entire like anthology's worth of a fiction, um, based on the uh, the the not the faction but the theme yeah. of the force pack. So uh, we're working with some ideas on other ways to deliver things. Absolutely. <laughs> right. What? Right. So these questions are just awesome. Thank you guys. Yes. Uh, Raining fire. Tete a tete plus a tete a te plushy. When? <laughs> So uh, chick- you guys may the have chicken st- people for those that don't know. From, oh, was that? That's oh. the chicken people. Oh, that what that is? That's yep. what that is. Oh, they want a, they want a chicken plushie. Yeah, they wanted the chicken people okay. plushie from Far Country. Far Country. People. Oh, chicken plushie. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, just give them a <laughs> oh, <laughs> probably. Urban mech torn in half with the head missing. It'd be a, it'd be a fun, almost like kind of gag gift to put in there, and nothing. There's no reason we couldn't do it. Um, but would you really want me to do that instead of doing like, let's say, a Mad Cat or a or yeah, a uh, Man of War you're kinda, you're or a giving up <laughs> a Shadow I mean, Cat? Oh, I'd love yeah, I mean, cat so plushie. you know, yes, we could do it for fun and it'd be it'd be hilarious because <laughs> you know because the chicken plushie could fight the Urban plushie head to head, but we would have to give something up to do it. So who gives up their favorite mech that could be a plushie <laughs> next next month or next year? Uh, Kara uh, Min- Minde. Any chance of a beard off 2.0? So there is a few esoteric items remaining from the last Kickstarter. Uh, shockingly enough, trying to nail down our schedules and then Jordan and Mitch's, Mitch's schedules yeah. and then COVID uh, has just proven nearly impossible. In fact, just trying to get a video out of Jordan to share on this live stream. Uh, he was all over Europe and yeah. so on and so forth. So. There is still plans to get this done. We absolutely want to do it. We had a blast last time. I loved beating the pants off them and forcing them to shave their beards. Plus, we have to, I have to grow a beard, and nobody wants to see that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it will be coming. Uh, or, some, or something like it. A red Eye on the Run. I, I've never played Battletech. Where do I begin? Would the Rookie Pledge be a good start? Yeah. The Recruit Pledge. Get, you, get yourself a, uh, just the beginner box. And, you know, maybe a salvage box or two along the way and just get going. You don't have to dive into the deep end of the pool. 
Uh, we love the we love the beginner box, and it's got some great stuff in it. Can we talk about the essentials as long as we're doing this? No, 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 oh. dude. no, right. not yet. No, All don't right. listen to that. Don't listen to him. Okay, uh, let's go again. There's so many questions here. We're missing a ton of these. Uh, if you're going to be watching across the weekend, bring them back up in other live streams. We're gonna we'll love to answer them. Uh, 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 wardrobe plays World War II. All this talk about Shrapnel Magazine has me tempted to go get some issues. Please do. It's fantastic. Even better, if you've ever thought that you wanted to write something, even like a scenario, yeah, uh, a silly letter, you know, like, it, you know, uh, my son Bryn did the whole, uh, I'm a prince from Nigeria and did it as I'm a, <laughs> a, a clanner from, uh, one of a Lyran world. Oh that got God, that was hilarious! Like it's, it's such a wonderful way to get little yeah. tidbits of the universe. We do, we submit. do, we Please do poetry. Submit. We yeah. do poetry. We will do advertise. We all will do like you know advertisements. It's just the the creativity is up to you guys. And we'll, if it's if it's fun and well presented, it has a chance of getting published. Uh, Adventure 55. This is the mega question that you answered. Uh-huh. Thank, <clears throat> thank you for taking my tough question on, uh, head on, Brass Balls. I'm currently at the Regiment Pledge level, and having the Battletech Universe Limited Edition book be an additional 200 is chapping my cheeks. Maybe give the Regiment levels a $150 discount. Um, the Universe book, we, we're still waiting for final some final costs from China, I believe, on that yeah. one. Um, it is... The book is insane. I mean, Randall's been, he's putting, he's packing everything he can. I think there's live ammunition in there. I, there I mean, is. it's just, he's packing everything he I'm can to it. it. like, just opens up and a mech, like, pops out. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> we don't know all, all of what's going to be in there yet. It is going to be a really big collectible. And I understand that could be a, a deal breaker. Um, if we find a way to make it a better deal, of course, we will, we will, we will do so. It all comes down to, we're, we're being a little cautious to make sure we can deliver exactly what we want to deliver. Uh, okay, Baller Dazul question. If not already answered, can you all set up a resource tied to canon character status and listings from the clan invasion? I still don't have any of my characters on the website. Okay, the biggest lesson learned <laughs> from the clan invasion Kickstarter. Uh, the biggest lesson learned in my entire <laughs> yeah was <laughs> beware customization uh you know individual customization um product uh we loved it at the time we still love the concept of it we will be digging ourselves out from from that particular under that mountain for quite a while um so we understand that a lot of you are still waiting and waiting patiently we appreciate that um and we are getting them done it just takes a lot more time to do it and even more time to then also organize it and make sure everyone's can find their their stuff out there. It's it's not it's this definitely was the maybe the single biggest crunchy thing we've ever taken on in our careers. It's the biggest mistake we've ever made. Yeah. Let's be clear. And again, I don't mean a mistake on what you guys did. No. You were amazing. Yeah. It was our mistake in not realizing how, how much amazing work you would be. And how much work <laughs> it would take for every one of them. And, and that the, the the primary obstacle was not us creating the items or the fans sending them to us. It was getting the data through the system. Yeah, the yeah, box. yeah. There's so many bottlenecks in that system. We we did not properly um, gauge the the process it would take. We thought it would have been we thought it would have been not easy, just easier than it ended up being. So it's, so we, it we're. Is- it is being worked on. We're still digging out. We, 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 we will. We are never going to give up on that till we have delivered every single one of those. Okay, uh, we did that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for asking these fantastic questions. By the way, yeah. Uh, let's see, Ch- uh, Chip Harris. If will we ever see Proto Max come back? We've got that uh, coming. I, I was there with Brian Neistel when we designed those. I and with uh, Doug Chafee. I have such a soft spot for those. I love the fiction behind them. They're just a pretty niche item. Yeah. So I'm just not sure we're ever going to see those in plastic. Uh, I, but I, I, think never, hap- I think it'll happen. I think it'll happen when we realize that there's a something we could do with them beyond how they were implemented the first time. Like there, there's going to be a. If we see them, it's because we've 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 leveled them up somehow. Yep. So that. But we, we don't have that yet. Yep. Uh, say Ward Robe plays World War II. Would you ever consider an STLs of a dropship? Yes. Uh, there's a proliferation force pack. 
yes, it's awesome. It will be on sale on store shelves. It's still about two months or so, maybe yeah. even three, because we literally flew them in here for the show. We flew in three cases. They disappeared in like, like an hour. That. It was amazing. It's so cool. Yeah. There's uh, uh, there's like uh, seven seven mechs in there? Seven mechs in it. The, the, the Mackie, of course... Then the five mechs that the other houses first designed, and then the first clan Omnimech. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Cerebus Cole, when do we get the Hollander? Uh, there are many 3055 mechs that would be wonderful to do. We're going to get there. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, Tom Lovewell, are there any plans for Catalyst and or Battletech events making their way to the UK Games Expo in June. As a matter of fact, yeah, Lauren sort of. and I are going to be there. Now, we're not going to have a booth. Uh, when we go to a show that we're a little unsure whether it's right for Catalyst, we will send the Recon Explorer team to go check it out. We uh, uh, Several years ago, we tried that with the New York Comic Con. We did that for two years and ultimately decided it wasn't right for Catalyst. Uh, but Lauren and I are going to be there. We're going to be walking around. Uh, obviously, I will be wearing Battletech paraphernalia. If you what see are the me, odds? Yeah, what are the odds, right? Uh, please come up and do talk to anything, us. Do you again. own anything else besides Battletech paraphernalia? Well, I think like five. I okay. still have my uh, uh, CMYK black oh, shirt, okay. which is like, mm, I still love that shirt. <laughs> Though I saw some other guy that said, uh, you've now read my shirt. That's enough social interaction for today. Yeah. I want that shirt very badly now. That fits you, yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, we're going to be there kind of exploring the show, talking with everyone, see if it's right for Catalyst to come back next year. Um, real question is, when do we get a Highlander plushie? <laughs> that would be awesome. We really need to get over and give the clan some love. Uh, if we do a series of clan ones and it's still selling and doing wonderfully, then we'll rotate back. And I, I'm, I would love the Highlander. I would want it to be towards the That'd top. That'd be a good as well. one. That'd be a good one. Yep. It make a, good, it would make a good plushie. Uh, give me that squishy chicken. <laughs> uh, raining fire. See, the people have spoken. They say yes to chicken plushie. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, med, made, medium marauder two, medium marauder two, C. Are you going to add the tank and infantry BSPs to BattleTech manual? Would you consider doing aerospace? Uh, in the same manner. It's on you. Um, that all, so uh, for the aerospace side, absolutely. You can see that this is a staged process, and every time we show that it works and the, and the fans embrace it, we then move on to the next level. Um, and in this instance, whether it's actually going to move over to the Battle Mech Manual, that's a discussion for a future time. We're going to see what happens with it in the Mercenaries uh, box, and we're going to get your feedback on it, and then mm. see how we continue to embrace it. There's a good one. Uh, Pop, Papa Chicken 137, now that Wolf is ill clan, do you see them going back to the Homeworlds clans to reclaim their title order after the Wars of Reaving? Do you think the Homeworld clans would submit to them without a fight? I'll answer the second question first. Uh, probably no. They would not submit at this point because they intentionally broke off ties. Oh, it's but been we, 70 years so, almost since. Yeah. Since so, the, so um, but then again, I mean, here's the thing. We honestly don't know exactly what we want to do with the Homeworld clans yet. There's a reason why we haven't gone back there. And we talked about this uh, yesterday. We will go back when we have the idea fully developed and the story ready to go that is so cool we cannot help but go back to the home worlds now if that means the best story is they go back and they swear fealty to alaric and join the join the new star league then that's what it'll be if we think there's a better idea then that's what it'll be so uh it's sitting there because no one has championed a brilliant awesome idea you know, has, has brought it to the table yet so we're just waiting on that uh, so many good questions here. Uh um, me a good one. Uh, will the 25 years of art and fiction book ever be republished? Mm, not as it is, no. More likely what you'll see is a 50 years of art and fiction you know, in 10 more years. Maybe I, I talked about doing a 40 years, but I think Brent, like, is like, he's over there like looking at me like, don't you dare. Well, we, uh, we totally talked about it. So... Yeah. Well, and to be clear, the universe book is really going to fill that role quite well. Yeah, I think uh, so. And then how can we not do a 50th? Oh, right? it, like it, that, it, that'd be it, amazing. It, it, there'll be so many things we do 
if we're still doing this 10 years from now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, L- Lorcan Nagel. I'm not saying it has to happen, but remember that Harrison Davian was known for his fashion faux pas that became a little teddy bear. And we're talking plushy toy options. <laughs> the Harrison Bear? Yeah, the Harrison Bear. Harry Bear? The Harry Bear. Uh, okay, let's yeah. see. Uh, and again, I ha- uh, we love answering the hard questions, and that's why, uh, oh, as I pull up the wrong thing. So we're happy to dive into some of those. Uh, uh, Jeremy Luke T, an option to omit some of the physical items we don't need from a pledge level would be really nice. Um, so there's only so much customization we can do. I mean, the, the, every time we, you know, the, the number of if-then statements we would need effectively to customize everything by every, making every item optional it would be a nightmare from a pledge manager point of view. Um, we did a little bit of that last time, but it was tricky. Again, pledges are designed to support the entire community, the fiction readers and the players and some of the swag items. I know you may not be the person who likes the challenge coins, but then, you know, there might be four people who do like the challenge coins. We have to speak to all of them. So, and to put together a pledge that says, you get X dollars of optional pledges, pick what you want. It's just not exciting, even though it may be the most efficient thing possible. But also, we're trying to just build packages that speak to our entire fan base. So please just you know understand that it's not we're trying to uh, force stuff on you you don't want. And even without, even if you say I don't want the swag, right with the fiction, your pledge level should still be a very good value by the time we're done. Or you know that's what our that's what our goal is. So please give us a chance to really keep doing this and dig into it and make sure you get you know what you, what it is you will make you happy. Uh, and Enigmatosis. Would you ever consider force packs based on specific novels or trilogies? Yes. Um, What is your, uh, from Cerebus Cole, what is your favorite podcast? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, Well, particularly because, like, is he talking Battletech related? Yeah. Is he talking everything under the sun? Like, I listen to theology podcasts, history podcasks. Geek podcast. I'm gonna, like, go with, I'm gonna go with Baltic or gaming related. Um, I don't know. I like Wolf Nets pretty good. Wolf Nets pretty, cool. pretty good. And um, yep. yeah, I like them. Give them a good shout out. Yeah, they they've been they've been kind to us. Uh, White Fox SG. Are there any plans to distribute even the beginner box or game of armor combat through other large box retailers like Walmart or Target? Yes. Uh, <laughs> duh, 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 well, the re- uh, and moving on quickly. Moving on. <laughs> Um, we're also at two minutes, gentlemen. Oh, yep, we're down to two minutes. We're we are really. Of, wow, yeah, the, gone that. We can go. Uh, what's, what's it eleven o'clock? Oh, no, it's checking with launch party. So keep going. We, uh, can, we, we can take an extra five or so, depending on how, how um, we're doing. Um, uh, thanks. Uh, sorry, Tom. Love well. Thanks for your answer. I'll be at the UK Games Expo too with my ten-year-old son. He has a preference for Marauders and Steiner Scout lances to pitch against my Jade Falcons. Awesome. Again, yes. I know it's going to be a massive show, but hopefully we can bump into each other and and talk the game we love. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is the counter counters pack available at Adepticon? Unfortunately, it did not make it. That was a mix up with the distributor when they're shi- when they're shipping us, you know, 40, 50 SKUs of items. Sometimes yeah. things get missed. Well, like, the like, like they missed they missed all the salvage boxes and stuff too. So we're we're bringing you know, some Speaking stuff of that aren't they're what coming in today. Enough? They're coming in today. Sometime, sometime today. Sometime so for today. those here at the show that happen to be listening, we're supposed to be getting a pile of salvage boxes. Please come running to the store later today. Uh, we already answered the Protomax. What are your opinions on STL 3D printers? They're uh, fun. Yeah, so I... One, they're never going to go away, so everyone has to deal with them. Two, I think... The vast majority of players, uh, provided there is a good, reasonable, official way to get the minis, will do it the official good way. It's the it's the Apple Music. However, I think the vast majority of people doing 3D printing are doing it for their terrain. Because the terrain doesn't need to look nearly as good as the mechs. In fact, you don't want the terrain necessarily look as good as the mech because then it kind of doesn't make the look. So... As you will see, I 3D printed almost everything in here. I had one or two spots that I needed some help with uh, that somebody came in, helped me out. I can almost not play Battletech anymore with cool terrain like this. So we're big fans of 3D yeah. printing. K- 
Can you add the pins and patches to Catalyst Store? Yes, and they will be added. I think they're talking about the old, the uh, the previous campaigns, yeah, pins all, and patches. Probably all of that. Um, so it's it's a lot of fiddly bits, and then we're we're working with the uh, warehousing on how to properly stock those so they can pick and pack for individual store purchases. But those should be going up, uh, finally going up uh, in the next. Very short. I want to say the next uh, few days, but uh, no, in the next few not, weeks, yeah, next few in the weeks. next few weeks, should, they should be up. And then all the we're still here for the next few days. That's yeah, true. <laughs> and then all the swag for this campaign will eventually make their way to the store after it's all delivered. That's like next year's thing. But yes, uh, that will be done. Uh, let's see. The Sergeant Cr- Sergeant Craker. Any plans for the Spirit Cats? They're my favorite of all the clanners. Yes. Uh, any chance of the shirts of the last? Kickstarter reappearing. Uh, yeah, let's I say would yes. Not, not for the Kickstarter. Yeah, but once on the we, store. Once we get through this spread, we have a whole year of planned of new factions. But there's no reason that if that continues to do well and you fans are wanting, we can't go back and start reprinting yeah. some of the great of of the previous thirty. And tell them where you'll put it on, on the, the store. store, not on the Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, come on, you guys. Uh, you guys want to do an Urban Mech Lamb box. As a matter of fact, I want to do an Urban Mech Lamb. Okay. Uh, let's see. Filarial, aside from the miniatures specifically, what physical goods do you guys want to release that you haven't yet? Ooh. Good question. Physical goods we want to release. Um, I Well, I mean, one of the ones we were looking at last night. I wanted to do a grab-and-go company uh, a little box pack that will hold, like, a company of mechs, a book, some record sheets. Like, for, for the older ones in the uh, yeah. audience, like a trapper keeper. Kind of. So it's just, just a grab-and-go, uh, you know, not bringing, like, your entire collection, but you're just going to hit the store for a game tonight, and you want to grab, like, you know, a couple lances. So, uh, so things to store, organize, travel with is one of the things. Some of yeah. the things we're looking at. Uh, and well, then, and one of the things, the, one of the other discussions we had were like uh, actual ceramic mugs with your logos put on it, or dog tags. Literally here at the show at Adepticon, we have a dog tag machine. We now. now have a dog tag machine, and we're going to be working on how can we put that into the store so you can. So we're not guaranteeing it. <laughs> we're going to be working on. How can it go in the store, and then we'll have somebody that just plugs it in and gets whatever you want. Uh, so man, we'll, I've had my dog tag. One of these dog tags has been on here since like 1987. So yeah, dog so, tags are awesome. Uh, so it's just again, we 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 just thought about doing it. We looked at a machine. We're like, you know what? This will make a fun thing to do at conventions and through our store for like the next couple of years. So we just we decided to go ahead and invest in that and have fun. So uh, that's you know, we're always looking at things like that uh, and uh, other swag things. You know, swag merch is just always looking for, th- yeah, for cool if, ideas. If, if you guys have things you really want to see, like the chicken blushy, tell us. <laughs> right, the, chicken the more we hear that, if there's actually a huge groundswell with lots of meme support of chicken plushies, you never know, uh, dude. And you should email every chicken meme to, to Mike Michael R. R. <laughs> Mike R. At rather dashing games dot com. <laughs> oh, he's back. He's here, isn't he's he? He's back. <laughs> okay. Uh, another enemy. There are some very creative formats for movement, penalty, etc. Dice on Etsy. Any chance you guys making your own? We are, in fact, looking at doing various sets of nice acrylic doing? tokens, movement tokens, and so on. Uh, again, it's not really our forte. Uh, and so we've been looking at yeah. working with some other companies to see if we can make that happen. Yeah. Um... Uh, IN51 Lauren, will you be at Essen Spiel 23 in Germany this year? I I believe if I leave the country uh, for a show that, uh, late in the year, I am more likely to join the. Uh, You're going down under. I think I'm going to, yeah, I think I'm going to be going. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the Australia. Uh, PAX Australia. We, we've been trying to get to PAX Australia, so for those Three who are years. in Australia. We are hoping 100% to come down there this year. We've been trying to get there for years. Yeah. But it happens to be the exact same weekend or or really close to Essen. It is with one, it's just and, two days overlap. Uh, and I would love to go to PAX Australia, and I cannot go there because I can't not go to Essen yeah. and all the amazing people and demo agents that I meet there. It's like family. So uh, yeah, so Brent over here is like, I'm going to Australia. The line Everybody, of those the that want to go to the whole Australia. Company. I think they're just going to start knifing each other. And- so I, I believe if I do travel uh, this time, this year, my plan is to uh, join the uh, the initial crew to PAX Australia. And then 
then I would go to Essen the following year. I, I, yeah, that'd be great. I was, team I was to have, going yeah. to Essen this year, but then Pax Australia now is. We're trying to figure it out. So, yeah, 40th anniversary Essen would be awesome. That's yep. like a good plan. Yep. Uh, another one asking about restocking of older T-shirts. Again, we're going to do it. Uh, there. <laughs> When all is by the t-shirts end of this are year, the, t-shirts are the biggest pain only because to do a t-shirt, it's not just doing one product. We're doing like ten. Yeah, it's because they have all different sizes and other things. Like so, doing a t-shirt is actually a lot of logistical. It is effort it's, for one for what looks like one item. Yeah. So, but, but obviously, I love them to death, and they are like the best marketing we can do. Every time I travel, there's a security guard at the airport that's like, battle tech, like, you know, yep. I can't not do it. Uh, let's see where we at. Uh, clan war mention. What's the status of the remaining items from the clan CW mentioned in the last update? I think, I think you might mean the clan invasion. Uh, we posted an update to the clan invasion a few months ago talking about there's yeah. a few digital items and a few esoteric items like our beard off. Uh, all of that absolutely is still being worked on. Yeah. Um, Mad, have you guys ever considered special forces packs for something like the Mad Cat or Mad Cat Mark One, Two, Three, or Four? Brent over here is immediately coming across the table. He wants his Mad Cat Mark Four very badly. Or was it the two or the four? Or all the above? MK2. MK2. That's what it was. Uh, I actually, I think we're are we at the bottom. I think we're at the bottom. Oh, what's the last one? Though? Uh, so last one we're going to answer. Mystic inept. Is there a historical period pre thirty twenty five you want to release more product for, not including proliferation pack? Yes, because That's I still want. I, oh no, it's not tough at all. The uh, reunification war. Mm. I still go back. To, I still go back to my Kerensky. Someday I want to go back to the young Kerensky and 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 Kerensky is like you know the the rise and fall down the reunification series. war. What's I thinking of? You're thinking the end of the Star Lake. Reunification War is 200 years before Oh, was, uh, was alive. What did Alexander go do? I thought it was Reunification War. What was it called? No, no. He took care of the Periphery Uprisings. Periphery Uprising. Thank you. Yeah. So I want I want to do like the, the, the Alexander Kerensky era. I and, agree. I would love I loved that fiction. I would love for yeah. you to go back and take care of that. And we got a Morris and, you know, we, we got some real fun back there. Yep. Okay, I think we're going to call it quit. We went 10 minutes over, but again, thank you so much yeah. for showing up. Some fantastic questions. I